Over the years, I've visited a number of crazy communities that are run quite differently than your average city or town. What I'm referring to are called experimental or intentional communities and they can be defined as a residential place where its members follow an alternative lifestyle. They share responsibilities, resources, and hold common views about society, politics, religion, and lifestyle. In this video, I'm going to share with you three experimental communities that I've visited around the world, and we begin with Oroville. What if I told you that there's a city with no laws, no religion, and no racism? A town where everyone is treated equally, makes the same salary with a 0% crime rate. This place exists in southeastern India and is called Oroville. Welcome to Oroville. I'm Gopi. I'm from Oroville. I grew up in Oroville. Been here all my life. My name is Tokyo. And where are you from? Oroville? Yeah, I'm from Oroville, but originally from Denmark. I'm Rishi. My name is Rishi. Rishi, and were you born here? I was born in Oroville, yes. My father's from the United States and my mother's from France. My name is Roger. And where are you from? My native is Oroville. What does Oroville mean to you? Okay, in a nutshell, it's for people who want to create something different. I mean, you take a risk, you know, create something that hasn't been created before. It's a place where youth that never ages. It's a free, free world. It's a free space. It's a international community, which of course is spiritually based, but it also gives a lot of freedom. Oroville uh, is this place for design and sustainability and... Oroville was founded in 1968 by French native Marissa Alfasa, known locally as the Mother. She had this energy to bring and create this project. She was a spiritual guru and yogi who established Oroville as an experimental town where, quote, men and women of all countries can live in peace and harmony above all creeds, politics, and nationalities. It's like a permanent burning man or like an adult playground. These are all recycled CDs that are hanging from an umbrella. So the street sign is actually the Beatles crossing the road. So Oroville is about 20 square kilometers and it's integrated between five villages. So the 20 square kilometer includes five villages. Okay. So we work with the village because these was the backbone to also create the community around. No? Today, around 3,000 residents from 57 countries call Oroville home and it's one of the most interesting places I've ever been. Uh, one third is uh, Indians, French would be the second and Germans would be the third, Italians, Dutch and so on. Oroville is engulfed in beautiful forests and there's so much to do that you never have to leave. There's a football here we come and play in the night. We have a pizza night every Thursday. All the people who work here make pizza and 200 you pay. It's free, like unlimited pizza you get. There's a medical center, sports fields, and 10 schools. We have school that does not have a campus. They travel and they learn. And then there's another school with no curriculum because you decide what you want to study. There's a variety of trendy restaurants. Deanna ordered a smoothie and has a reusable straw. Cafes and handcraft shops. What's the name of this thing? Matri Mandir. It's a physical and spiritual center of Oroville. It's a place of meditation. No kinds of prayers, no worship, no incense, no candles. Silence is the only rule you follow. You sit in silence or stand in silence. Although technically owned by India, Oroville acts as an independent international community. It gets its budget from monthly contributions from its residents, and it gets funding from outsider organizations like UNESCO and the UN. And the UNESCO Youth Conference was set up in 1968. February 28th, where youth from 124 countries came with a handful of soil from their country and put it in the center of this urn there. It's an amphitheater and there's a white color urn. So all the soil has been put there as a symbol of unity, representing unity. Every single Oravillian, whether you're a doctor, a teacher, or a yoga trainer, makes the exact same salary of 12,000 rupees a month, which is only $170. Plus a lunch health insurance and free education for kids and free electricity. But the economy is nearly cashless. And any commercial activities happening generate an income and they pay 33% of their profit back to the community, which is the foundation. I design furniture and make furniture. As I love wood, I started this unit that do salvage from, from the forest. I do reforestation, trying to bring back the original forest we had here. I'm a graphic designer. I do graphic design and more technical drawings for furniture. Instead of paper currency, all residents are given an account number to pay for things. We just write the number and we can pay and buy stuff or eat food or grocery stores are there where we can use this number so we don't have to carry cash around. And because everyone here knows each other, it runs on the trust system. I can't help but wonder, what if the whole world was like this? 
Will the world be a better place? This is a question that I will ponder forever. Right after I visited Oroville, someone told me about a similar place in my home state of Arizona called Acosanti, so I had to pay a visit. Do you guys remember four months ago, I visited an experimental town in southeastern India called Oroville? Well now I'm here, halfway across the world, in my home state of Arizona, and I'm going to tell you about a similar place called Arcosanti. I think that Arcosanti is the perfect example of the alternative of the urban sprawl. A place where if you want to go somewhere to relax or to enjoy a great scenery or community, then this is the place. This morning, we made the drive up one hour from Phoenix to visit, and whoa, this place is cool. It's like a playground for architecture in the middle of the Arizona desert. Around 80 people live here now, but over 7,000 people have called Arcosanti home since its creation in 1970. I used to live in Prescott, um, 45 minutes away. I came here when I was 18. Uh, my name's Michael Bittman. I'm known here as Dr. Sparks. I'm from Port Townsend, Washington. When did you first arrive here? I did my workshop in 1979. So my name is uh, Tim Bell, and I live at Arcosani, but I was born in Joshua Tree, California. And um, what do you do here? Um, I do a bit of everything, just like everybody else that lives here. The drilling and grinding and molding all the all the boxes. Do you do all the hard work? Oh yeah, oh yeah, everybody does. I teach uh, about solar electric, uh, solar hot water, energy efficiency. So I lived in New York for five years. I lived in LA for five years, and. Uh, when I came to Arcosani for the first time, I suddenly realized that the feelings that I'd had about living in cities, you know, I didn't feel accountable for my actions living in a city. What do you like so much about Arcosani? Uh, it's interesting, for sure. I really enjoy it. I mean, it's gorgeous. Love walking my dog around. He became a resident on the same night as I did. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, interacting with all the cultures that come in, since the students come in from around the world. You don't think what you're going to come in here until you see it and then it will hit you in the head and it's just like it's beautiful. Arcosanti was established in 1970 by an Italian American architect Paola Soleri. It's simple, it's sustainable, it's based off an arcology concept, a blend of architecture and ecology to demonstrate how urban conditions could be improved while minimizing the destructive impact on the earth. The reality is that we're going to have 9.5 billion people on this planet in the next 30 years. That's 2.5 billion more people than we have right now. And if everyone lived the way that we live in the developed Western world, then we'd need 3.5 globes to sustain our current global population. That's not accounting for growth. So the idea behind arcology is that if you can make a dense urban landscape, but you can put a boundary around it so that people have immediate access to nature, then you take care of a lot of the anxiety that comes from living within an urban environment these days. We have here 4,000 acres of land that we steward as a nature reserve, and 25 acres put aside for development. So our property here extends out to where you can see those big steel power towers in the distance. Yep. But the people who choose to live here are what I find most fascinating about Arcosanti. We currently have 80 residents. So we have people from Paraguay, Italy, Japan, Germany. Um, we have housing for about 150 people though, but uh, a lot of that housing is dedicated to Airbnbs and guest rooms so that people from the outside can come in here. We like to think of ourselves as an extensional community. Uh, this is a dorm for our workshoppers, so the people who come and do the educational program. The types of people who come to take our workshop tend to be millennials who are curious right. about learning. And contrary to what it may appear, daily life here functions quite normally. We work 40 hour weeks, it's part of our life here. But at the end of the day, no one has to get in a car and go anywhere. So you have so much free time to be an artist or an entrepreneur or to sit inside at night and read a book. Arcosanti makes most of its money by selling these crafty handmade bells. So we have a for-profit bell business that directly benefits the nonprofit educational institution. So by selling these bells, we're able to employ people to work on the site. And on the nonprofit side, we're able to run daily tours and open up guest rooms and host special events. And so these are all ways that we manage to generate revenue so that we continue supporting both the community but also the project. All right, that was a very interesting experience. We are now heading out of Arcosanti. It's a great alternative to how we live in such big cities in the world and it's 
really similar to Oroville in India and actually with my tour guide there, Gopi, who told me about this place, I'm really happy that I came here and checked it out. Try to imagine a world where you don't drive to work, where everything is here, right in front of you. You're not wasting electricity, you're not wasting water, you're very sustainable living. That is what you call Arcosanti. And lastly, I take you to southern Spain to visit another experimental community called Sacromonte. What's up guys, Drew Binsky here in southern Spain in a town called Granada and behind me is one of the most unusual and bizarre settlements I've ever seen in my life. Check this out. What, what's your favorite thing about living here? Freedom, you don't see. In this place, not exists a lie. You exist in your life. If you are a bad person, people don't give you a chance to live here. Of course. ¿Para qué viniste? ¿Por qué? Bueno clima, Buen clima. bueno país. ¿Qué es lo que más te gusta de vivir aquí? Estoy muy tranquilo. <laughs> Absolutamente verdad. Claro. claro. No claro. problema policía, mire. La madrugada, todo. No problema, no problema. Just casually, marijuana plant. No problema. I like, but it's a little hard. Many caves mm, there are not uh, basic service like uh, water. Do you have water in your location? Uh, no. No? <coughs> no. I'm going to Fuente del Avellano, two kilometers uh, more or less. Tucked away in the hills of Granada, in a neighborhood called Sacromante, you will find these abandoned caves that look like hobbit homes. These mountains kind of remind me of the hills of LA. It's like deserty, these brown shrub, and there's just these caves inside. These people are living inside of the mountain. It's made up of about 50 free-spirited travelers and modern hippies from Spain, from Holland, from Eng England, who coexist peacefully and live a completely stress-free life. <laughs> yeah. So this is like the, the front door, this purple yes. umbrella, yeah. and then that's the cave. This place is a community in every sense of the word. You know, I was in Oroville in India, I was in Arcosanti in Arizona, and this is just a very, very similar feeling to be here in Granada, Spain. Unbelievable place, wow. So this cave's only for puppies. Yeah. They have food and water here? Yes, every day. Más o menos four, five, seven kilo eating for these dogs. <laughs> What's most shocking to me is that this community is not remote. In the distance lies one of the world's most impressive fortresses that's over 1100 years old. This is Alhambra, the best conserva conservado, mm, conserved. conserved in Europe. If you walk two minutes down the hill from where we are standing, you'll find a rich area. The mountain just divides it right there. And 10 minutes farther down is the city of Granada. But these cave livers do not rely on their neighbors to survive. They're self-sufficient. Only a few of the caves have electricity from solar panels. Others have old school TVs, and only one cave has Wi-Fi. That's the only house with internet. Which one? The one up there. The blue... I see it. Things like running water and outside toilets are often shared between neighbors. Cocina! Wow, cocina! Cocina! Oh, dormitory. Oh, oh. Look, cave. Mm -hmm. And you're doing this cave. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to, to make it? I don't know. I'm doing this, uh, this and this for eight months. Yeah. I'm scratching. Every time you're scratching, scratching. So when are you going to finish this? I don't know. I have uh, all the life for this. He was in the street in Granada and sleeping in the street. He was homeless and he met a Venezuelan. The Venezuelan told him, don't sleep in the street. I have uh, a cave here in Sacramonte. You can come with me. <laughs> Su casa. Yes. Can I come? Coming. Coming. Do yeah. you have the, the bed? Yeah. It's actually cooler weather in here yeah. than outside because it's super hot outside. The second you walk in here, it feels much better. Um, Bella, um, candle. Wow. Here are. Um, There's some huge spiders right up here in this region. Spider. The thing that you notice here is that they're happy. They live a free life. They're not stressing about anything. It's a very strong sense of community, friendship. Okay, everybody, they see you later and thanks for watching. Thank you. So good. <laughs> Perfect, man. <laughs> You're a legend. Thank you. Adios. Adios, amigos. I'll end this video by asking you, what do you guys think of experimental communities? Could you ever live in one? Regardless of what your thoughts are, I am certain that we will see many more experimental communities pop up all over the world, so make sure that you keep a close eye out for them. Peace. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.